Do you want to implement real-time chatting capabilities in your mobile apps today? Well, you came to the right place. In this video, I'm going to teach you the fastest and simplest way to implement exactly that using Flutterflow and Superbase real-time databases. So stick around for this video, it's going to be a good one. So first things first, let's go over the requirements. Obviously, you will need to have a Flutterflow project with a chat page. So the chat functionality should be already there. This is the Instagram clone that I created from my Instagram clone series. If you're interested, please check that out over here. All right, and the second requirement is obviously to have a Superbase project. The Superbase project has to already be linked to the Flutterflow project over here. Yep, so as you can see, it's already linked. So once you have those two requirements, you're actually ready to continue along with this tutorial. Alright, so the first step is to actually implement some custom actions in our Flutterflow app. So we can go over to custom code over here and you want to add a new custom action. The custom action that we want to add, you can find it inside of this GitHub over here. I've already put the link down in the YouTube description. The one that we want to choose is our subscribe 2025 dot file. So we can just copy this file go back to Flutterflow and we'll replace everything over here. Then we'll click on save action. Oops, I forgot to change the name. So I cannot spell <laughs> subscribe. Make sure that this action name over here is the same as this function name over here. Then we can save our action. We click on yes. It should save automatically. So for those of you that are interested, let me just quickly run through what this custom action does. So first, let's talk about the arguments that the function takes in. So this custom action takes in a table name, which is a string, a callback action, which is a function, as well as a session ID, which is a string over here. So what is this session ID? Well, this session ID is basically the chat ID, which uniquely identifies the chat. So if we go into your Superbase database table editor, my chats table over here, you can see that my session ID will then be my ID over here, which identifies the chat that it refers to. All right, so what we're trying to do first is we're actually trying to subscribe to our real-time database. All right, so now that we have the arguments out of the way, let me just explain what this whole chunk of code is actually about. It may look like a lot, but it's actually not that difficult to understand. So. This is basically just the channel that we are trying to subscribe to and we're just giving this channel a name over here. So this name can be anything, it doesn't matter. And now we have to specify the event that we want to listen to on our real-time database. So in this case, we want to listen to the Postgres change event dot insert. So whenever a new row is inserted into our table, then we want to sort of listen to that change and be notified of that change in our front end app. The schema is public since the table, which is our messages table, is in the public schema. You can see the public schema. And then the table will be the table that we are passing into this argument over here. And the table will actually just be our messages table because whenever a new message is sent to this table, then we want to update it automatically in the front end of our app. But now we also have this filter over here. This filter is important because we only want to update the chat groups or chats where the message is sent to. So over here you can see that the filter type is the equality filter. The column is session ID. So we actually have to change this because instead of session ID in our messages table, the name is actually chat ID. So we need to search for the chat ID over here. So instead of session ID, it'll be chat ID. Then it's equal to the value of our session ID that we pass into our arguments over here. Then last but not least, we need to do a callback, which we specify with our callback action. And this callback action will simply be just to refresh our database request. Then we just subscribe to it. If all goes well, then we'll just print it to our console that it has been subscribed to our table. If not, we want to catch any errors and we want to print the errors to our console for debugging purposes. Yep, so that's the brief rundown of this subscribe function. Now, if we go back to the GitHub link, we also see that there's an upsubscribe 2025.dot action. So we just copy this 
and we made a new and we can make a new custom action called unsubscribe then we'll just select all oops need to exit out of that first select all and then paste it over here and save the action so this action is a bit more simple you can see that it's only about eight lines of code six lines of code actually it takes in the table argument which is the table name that we are subscribing to which will be our messages table and then is just simply unsubscribing from this channel that we have named earlier so it just unsubscribes so that we can sort of keep everything clean and make sure that we are not using too much resources on superbase side yep so that's just the unsubscribe action it's pretty simple actually all right, so now that we have both of our custom actions done, we can actually implement them in our Flutterflow app. So where do we want to implement these actions? Well, it'll be whenever we go to our chat page over here. So in our chat page or in your own app's chat page, we want to implement the actions on the root page. So we click on this, we open the action flow editor. Then we want to first unsubscribe actually. So we want to unsubscribe from everything just to be safe, to clean everything up. For the table name, make sure that you are subscribing to your messages table or the table that you are containing all of your messages in. In my case, it's called messages, so I'll just type in the exact name, messages. Make sure it's the same name as your table. After unsubscribing, you want to actually wait for a while. So we can just wait for around 500 milliseconds. And subsequently, we can do the subscribe action. So over here, we have to specify our table name once more. So it'll be the messages table. Now the callback action, we need to add a new action and we want to add a refresh database request action. For the widget that we want to request, to refresh, sorry, it should be the list view, let me check. Yep, it's the list view which contains all of our message containers over here. So let me go back our subscribe action make sure that we have selected the correct one this should be the widget that is generating all of your messages or uh, is querying your messages from your super base table and I believe we have one last parameter to insert so this is the session ID which will basically be your chat ID so it'll be the chats ID over here so for me, I can access it from my chat row and I'll just access it with my chat ID. Give it a default variable value of zero, just in case something breaks. All right, yep, and that's actually just, all right, and that's actually it for the Flutterflow site. The last step is to configure Superbase to enable real-time databases. So what we want to do, we want to go to database over here. We want to go to publish publications and under Superbase real-time we want to click on this source then you simply just want to choose the table that you want to make into a real-time database so in my case it'll be the messages table so I'll just toggle that and you can see that this is the success message over here yep if we go back to database again publications you can see that under one table our messages table has been enabled for real-time functionality all right, yes, and it's actually that simple to implement a real-time chatting functionality into your app. So let's go ahead and test it out right now. All right, while waiting for test mode to load, I thought that it'd be good to introduce you to the real-time pricing for Superbase as well, so that you're more aware and you don't like spend a thousand dollars or something. All right, so real-time is charged on the number of messages as well as the number of connections that are going on. So for messaging, it's actually 250 per 1 million messages and you're only charged for usage exceeding your subscription plan's quota. So for the free plan, which I believe most of you are on, it's actually just 2 million, which is quite a lot actually. So every row is one message and you have 2 million messages. Then you can see for the other plans as well. And if we scroll down over here, we can see the peak connections pricing, which is $10 per 1,000 peak connections. And for the free plan, we have a quota of 200 connections. So yep, this is good to know so that you don't end up overspending and suddenly having like a 
$10,000 bill from Superbase. All right, so Tesla has successfully loaded up. Let me quickly sign into my account. And do I have any chats? Yes, I have a chat over here. So let me just split the screen. Okay, so if we try sending a new message, so the chat ID will be this one. Then we click on the sender ID, we just choose this one. You can see that a new row is inserted, however, unfortunately, the message was not sent. And why that is because of this error over here. So you can see that there's an assertion failed error scroll container not attached to any scroll views. So this was an error on my part. If we go back to our Flutterflow project inside of our chats page, you can see that before the unsubscribe and subscribe custom actions, we actually have this scroll view over here. So we should actually not have this, we should delete that. And because previously that scroll to error was that scroll to action was actually coming out with an error which prevented all of these other actions from running. So that is why we did not see, that is why we got this error and we did not see it update in real time. And how I debugged that was also because in our custom code, in our subscribe custom action, you can see that we added these two lines to print the result into our console. But in my Google Inspector console over here, I actually did not see any of that being printed. So this is also why it's also helpful to add some debugging inside of your custom actions as well. So it's a good tip to have, and yeah, it really saves quite a lot of time when trying to debug errors. So if we try to reload our Flutterflow project here again, you can just go ahead and delete this actually. And let's try, hopefully it all works well now. All right, yep, so we have our app loaded. Let's click on this. And you can see that now we have subscribed to the messages for session ID is equal to one. So this tells us that we have actually subscribed to our real-time database. Now let's try inserting a row. And when we save this, you can see that when we inserted a row, it was automatically updated inside of our Flutterflow app over here. So great, everything works and terrific. I'm very happy now. And this is a very happy Axelos indeed. If you're interested in learning how to implement other advanced functionalities using Flutterflow and Superbase, like this forgot and reset password function, do click on this video over here. You don't want to miss it.